Hello, and thank you for joining me for AutoWare 101. My name is Josh Whitley, and today's course will teach you a little bit about the history, structure, and current projects of the AutoWare Foundation. We'll go into a little bit of depth about each of the individual projects, tell you where you can find more information about the projects, and where you can get support, as well as who to contact if you have any questions about the Foundation or about becoming a member. Let's get started. Thank you again for joining me for AutoWare 101, the history and future of the AutoWare Foundation. To get started, uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on myself. I am Joshua Whitley, the owner and founder of Whitley Software Services. I am currently employed as the system architect for the AutoWare Foundation. Uh, in the bottom left there, you'll see a picture of myself at my previous position at Autonomous Stuff as the senior innovation engineer for software systems. Uh, and then on the right, you'll see a picture of myself and my fiance um, attending a production of Rent. So back to the AutoWare Foundation. What is the AutoWare Foundation? Uh, AutoWare.ai was started in 2015 by Shinpei Kato at Nagoya University. Uh, today, AutoWare.ai is supported by the largest autonomous driving open source community with over 3,800 stars on GitHub and more than 1,700 accounts on Slack. AutoWare has found widespread and international adoption, and it's used by more than 100 companies. It runs on more than 30 types of vehicles, and it's used on those vehicles in more than 20 countries. Uh, there are also AutoWare courses that are offered in five countries. In addition, uh, automotive OEMs are using AutoWare for mobility as a service. Now, if you haven't, if you aren't familiar with mobility as a service, it's kind of like software as a service, where you're essentially only getting the parts you need from the service. So, whereas in software as a service, you get the uh, the software services, the cloud hosted services, etc., that you need to develop your application, mobility as a service offers to the users only the forms of mobility they need, like micro mobility, such as scooters or robo taxis. AutoWare has also been qualified to run on driverless vehicles on public roads in Japan since 2017, but we as a foundation are now taking AutoWare to the next level. So if you have any, if you'd like more information about the AutoWare Foundation in general, you can go to AutoWare.org and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth later on in the presentation about how the foundation is organized. So here's the basic structure from a high level. Uh, we start on the left with the board of directors, which steers the foundation and provides guidance for where the foundation should be going. The board of directors oversees the technical steering committee, which is made up of premium member organizations and their invited guests. The technical steering committee uh, decides what operational design domains or ODDs we are going to next develop for the AutoWare projects. It also determines the projects that are going to be worked on by the foundation. You can see at the top, the, the members make up the technical steering committee, but all members, not just premium members, uh, make up the task forces and work groups, which are overseen by the technical steering committee. In addition, the task forces and work groups are open to the public and the rest of the AutoWare community is welcome to join those calls. Here we have a list of the current, some of the high level current members of the foundation. Um, so in our premium category, you'll see a lot of vehicle OEMs, hardware manufacturers, uh, tier one suppliers of autonomous vehicle sensors, those sorts of organizations. Um, in the industrial group, you'll see a lot of uh, additionally hard, additional hardware manufacturers, um, providers and developers of sensors, uh, as well as chip manufacturers like Intel. And then in our academic and nonprofit member group, you'll see a lot of universities and uh, technical organizations that are attached to country governments. So to the projects that the AutoWare Foundation is currently working on, there are three main projects, which are AutoWare.ai, AutoWare.auto, and AutoWare.io. 
And I'll go into a little bit more detail of each of these three projects. Starting with autoware.io. So what is autoware.io? Uh, the intent of autoware.io is to provide a heterogeneous hardware reference platform with tools, a unified interface design, and a test framework. And there's a lot of jargon kind of thrown into that sentence, but when you break it down, it really comes down to being able to run the AutoWare software projects on as much hardware as possible. So that includes creating things like reference designs for people to be able to build their hardware from, uh, a set of tools to be able to test AutoWare on their hardware, a standardized uh, interface design so that you can run AutoWare with as little modification as possible on each of those hardware platforms and just generally providing a, a testing framework that is useful to test autoware on each of those platforms the autoware.io project has already started by providing um, heterogeneous socs on open specifications uh, soc standing for system on chip so it's a hardware specification for how to build system on chip platforms that support AutoWare AI and AutoWare Auto. And one example of that is the, the 96 boards automotive specification. AutoWare.io also wants to help enable software developers and hardware device manufacturers to be compatible with AutoWare.ai and AutoWare.Auto. So if you want more information about the AutoWare.io project, you can visit AutoWare.io. Uh, the hardware reference design that I was mentioning from 96 boards is available on Ross Discourse, and that's where most of the information was gathered to put together that reference design. There's, a, there's also an open BSP, which is a uh, software layer that goes on the open hardware to allow you to boot up a general Linux operating system and run AutoWare on top of that with Ross in between. And that BSP can also be found on Ross Discourse, as well as the discussion about the development of that BSP. And then as far as hardware documentation for the 96 boards uh, auto core PCU, the documentation for that can be found on GitHub as well. So the current status of autoware.io um, is that, as I mentioned, that, that first 96 boards open platform is available um, from 96 boards, but we intend to have many more available in the future. Uh, this product specifically features heterogeneous computing for autonomous driving and ADAS systems. It provides automotive grade interfaces like CAN, UART, AVB, uh, TSN capable ethernet, those sorts of things. And it was designed with functional safety, redundancy and built-in customization in mind. It also has a fully validated stack with functional algorithm modules, and they continuously update the SDK and the software platform uh, via downloads. So the timeline for where we plan to go with AutoWare at .io, um, we've already gotten through the heterogeneous SOC platform, which was that 96 boards platform, as well as sensor integration. Um, the intent is to have multiple vehicle integration, which means using that, that SOC platform on multiple vehicles and having it available out of the box from a specific vendor. Um, then establish a testing framework, hopefully by the end of this year. And then the middle of next year, provide multiple SOC platforms, which can be installed on vehicles to run AutoWare AI, AutoWare.Auto. So now let's get into the, the software side of things. Um, the first of the two projects we're going to talk about is AutoWare.ai. So AutoWare.ai is a, intended to be a full self-driving software stack, um, which would be equivalent to somewhere between SAE levels three and four, uh, that's completely based on ROS1. It supports many different vehicle platforms, and it contains sets of launch files, configuration files, example pre-trained neural networks for use with uh, sensor information from cameras and LIDAR, and example maps that you can run in a simulation environment. There's more information about the project in general at autoware.ai, uh, but you can also find the, the full open source repository on GitHub and the wiki documentation on GitHub. 
So as far as the history of Autoware.ai, uh, it was started in 2015 by Shinpei Kato at CMU. Um, many features, though, were initially developed by students at Nagoya University in Japan. The first official release was in August 2015, and then in December 2015, uh, Tier 4 was formed as an organization, and they provided most of the development until somewhere around mid-2018. Autoware.ai has been through a few hosting moves, uh, originally from GitHub to GitLab in June 2019 because of the features that were available at that time for project management. And now it is moving back to GitHub as it is the primary open source development uh, hosting environment for, for most of the open source community. So where is Autoware.ai right now? So Autoware.ai was originally built on ROS Indigo and it currently supports ROS Melodic only. Um, there are currently no intention there is currently no intention to support ROS Noetic, as uh, you'll see in the upcoming timeline. However, it does contain over 209,000 lines of code and has multiple implementations of various algorithms in the areas of control, localization, perception, planning, and simulation. You can test out those algorithms in multiple simulators as well, such as the LGSVL and the Carla simulator. So one example of a use case for Autoware AI is from the company Autonomous Stuff with their Open Autonomy Pilot. So the Open Autonomy Pilot employs a slightly modified version of Autoware.ai, but most of the core functionality is the same that's available in the regular open source version. It has been used in active urban environments, and you can find out more information about that project on Autonomous Stuff's website. So I'll just play a short video here of a demonstration that was done on a closed course with the Open Autonomy Pilot. You can see the vehicle coming up to a stoplight and the perception algorithms for the cameras are able to detect the state of that stoplight, which you can see in the bottom left hand corner. So once the stoplight turns green, the vehicle automatically detects it and will continue on its pre-planned route. So regarding Autoware AI, there are some drawbacks uh, from the viewpoint of how it was developed over time. It was not originally designed for functional safety. Uh, the Autoware.ai code base grew organically, which means that code quality and development best practices were not really prioritized in the development and maintenance of Autoware.ai. Also, the development started early in the autonomous vehicle revolution. Um, so it didn't have the most up-to-date algorithms to begin with, although many have been added over time. But it is an excellent platform for research and development and testing in closed course environments. As far as the future of Autoware.ai, in December 2020, or thereabouts this year, the last major version of Autoware.ai will be released. We are currently still accepting feature submissions, but non-breaking API changes only. Then in January 2021, a maintenance period will begin, uh, which will end in December 2022 with the end of life of Autoware AI. So where are we going after Autoware AI moves to end of life? That's where Autoware.auto comes in. So Autoware.auto is also an open source autonomous vehicle software stack, but it's based on ROS2 and the DDS infrastructure underneath ROS2. It is intended to support specific operational design domains or ODDs. It provides a modular reference design with clearly defined APIs between each of the components. And the major advantage to that is it allows users or manufacturers to extend the functionality that's available in the open source version with their own modules. And they can use those clearly defined APIs to hook their modules into the ones that are available via open source. The usage and API documentation are auto-generated from the code source, and you can find the documentation in the link on this slide. 
So some of the differences between AutoWare.ai and AutoWare Auto, uh, Auto was designed with safety, code quality, static memory allocation, and modularity in mind from the beginning, as well as documentation, documentation, documentation. As I mentioned before, all of that documentation is auto-generated, and we make sure that code submissions include plenty of that documentation to generate those docs. If you want more information about the project as a whole and how it relates to the other projects and the foundation, you can go to autoware.org or you can go directly to the repository on GitLab for the code source. Regarding the history of where autoware.auto began, uh, development began in August 2018, and the initial framework and development work was done by Apex.ai uh, in partnership with Tier 4, the original developers of autoware.ai. The first release was done in August 2019, and we are currently in a period of ongoing active development by most of the member organizations of the AWF. All of that development has to be managed by someone, and that's done by the AutoWare Software Working Group, or ASWG. And as I mentioned before, those meetings are open to the public. So if you click that calendar link, you'll find a Google Calendar with the layout of all of our future meetings, and you're welcome to attend. So the current status of AutoWare.Auto. Um, AutoWare.Auto currently ta targets ROS dashing, and after uh, the AVP release, which we'll get into what AVP means in just a minute, uh, we will be upgrading to support ROS Foxy as well. In addition, we offer a Docker-based development and runtime environment called ADE. And the major advantage to ADE is that you can provide a set of Docker containers and it will merge all those together um, as volumes and allow you to do things like running simulators inside the Docker environment that are pre-configured to work with AutoWare.Auto. The Docker containers also natively support uh, AMD64 and ARM64 architectures. So right now, we're not quite at feature parity with AutoWare.AI, but we're working very hard toward that goal. Uh, the, as far as sensing goes, the current stack supports point gray cameras and FLIR cameras, uh, XSense GPSs and IMUs, and several Velodyne sensors, the Puck, Puck Light, and Puck High Res. Now that's just regarding the drivers that are built into the AutoWare Auto stack. In addition, you can provide your own driver from the ROS community and pipe in things like standard messages, such as the Point Cloud 2 message or the nav messages, or excuse me, the sensor messages odometry message for your GPS and IMU data. With that data, uh, the current algorithms that are implemented include localization using uh, NDT matching, ground filtering of LiDAR data using a ray classifier, object detection using LiDAR data with a voxel grid or Euclidean clustering filtering algorithms, uh, a couple of vehicle interfaces, which are currently done through Linux socket can or simulation specific interfaces, such as an interface specifically for the LGS VL simulator, and then motion control through either Pure Pursuit or MPC controllers. So all of this functionality has kind of come out of our effort to currently target our first demonstration operational design domain. And the first ODD that we've chosen is Autonomous Valet Parking, or AVP, which essentially just means being able to go to a drop-off zone, get out of the vehicle, and then tell the vehicle to go park itself. Then once you come out of wherever you're shopping, you go back to the drop-off zone and recall the vehicle back to your location. So as far as where we're at in developing the AVP operational design domain, uh, we are currently in our third milestone. The third milestone includes the integration of HD mapping, uh, route planning, navigation along the route, uh, parking maneuvers to get in and out of the parking stalls, and automatically stopping for detected obstacles until they are clear. Regarding where we are going with the AutoWare.Auto AVP ODD, uh, Milestone 4 will include on-vehicle integration, including switching from uh, simulation only to real vehicle sensors and interfaces. Uh, 
And a lot of that work that we've been doing has been only done in simulation because of the, the COVID-19 issue. It will also include configuring the hardware on the vehicle and adding any necessary device drivers and vehicle interface nodes. Then finally, the milestone five will be our AVP demo. That will include a week long hackathon leading up to the Friday of that week where we do the actual demo. And during that hackathon, we hope to develop some GUI tools like maybe a mobile phone application to be able to, to do the uh, parking and recall functions. And then after we have each of these development cycles that targets a specific ODD, we have a cleanup milestone. And the idea behind the cleanup milestone is to be able to add any additional missing documentation. And then along the way, as we develop, we, we are putting together a list of best practices and we're learning those as we go, in addition to the ones that are, that are well known by the community. But because we're learning them as we go, we have to go and kind of backport those and fill out the rest of the source code with those best practices. And then as I mentioned earlier, uh, autoware.ai moved back to GitHub and we'll be doing the same with autoware.auto after the AVP demonstration and cleanup are complete. So how does the Autoware Foundation develop their code? How do they decide what to, choose, what to develop and, and how does the work get done? So we use an ODD based development cycle. So the ODD definition process starts with the technical steering committee defining the ODD that we want to target. Then uh, they, the operational design domain working group, which has not yet been formed, specifies the scenarios required to support the operational design domain that we want to work on. After that part is done by the ODD working group, that gets passed back to the technical steering committee to choose the next operational design domain. And while they're choosing the next one, the previous one is worked on by the software development group and the hardware development group. So here's a little bit more detail of the breakdown of how the operational design domain is defined and the scenarios are chosen. So you can see at the top, there's an ODD definition with a set of parameters that define that ODD. And those are filled out by the ODD working group. In each of those scenarios, uh, we, we then create a set of scenarios, each of which has a subset of the parameters involved for, for the ODD. Then those scenario parameters are put into a machine readable format. And we have a validation and verification group, which will use that machine readable format to test those scenarios to make sure that we're meeting our operational design domain goals after the development process is complete. We will also then test those on the real vehicle. So I'm sure by now you're all interested in knowing how you can contribute to the AutoWare Foundation projects. First thing you can do is follow the development of AutoWare.auto on GitLab. So if you click that link there, you'll see a list of our issues that we're currently working on to make AutoWare.auto uh, at least have feature parity with AutoWare.ai and target our specific ODDs. If you don't have any experience contributing to open source projects, that's no problem either. Just click on this link to GitHub for an excellent example that will lead you through step-by-step -step making a contribution to your first open source project. You can also join us on Slack. So if you click that link, it'll let you create an account and you can talk to us real time on Slack. But please keep in mind that uh, Slack is not for support, but only for discussion. You can also talk to us on Discourse in the AutoWare category of the Ross Discourse site. And then if you're interested in joining the foundation as a member organization, you can send an email to auto at autoware.org. Then finally, I mentioned support. Where you can get support starts with the documentation. So there's project specific documentation at the two links that I've listed there, one for AutoWare AI and one for autoware.auto. Your second stop should be Ross Answers. So if you click that link, you'll see a list of all of the questions that have been asked regarding AutoWare. If you want to ask a question yourself, all you have to do is click new question and then put a tag on it with the word AutoWare and we'll get to it as soon as possible. Then finally, 
if you've had a discussion or a Ross answers question that has led to the confirmation of a bug, feel free to open a new issue on our GitLab site. Thanks for hanging in there with me through AutoWare 101. Today, we learned a little bit about the AutoWare Foundation, its structure, history, and current projects, as well as how to contact the AutoWare Foundation, where to get support, and how to contribute if you're interested. Thanks for sticking with me, and stay safe.